Hey everybody, Dan here from Pain for You. Today's topic is going to be perceived dangers don't have to be conscious. They can be, but they don't have to be. So I'll get to that in a minute. Take a few nice breaths. Breathe in the peace. Exhale the stress and the noise. Breathe in the clarity. Exhale the doubt. All right. So I've been talking a lot about perceived danger pain or perceived danger symptoms. And I do truly believe that pain is the purpose of pain is to protect us from things that the brain perceives are dangerous. So in my opinion, whenever pain comes on or is persistent, it's based on the brain's perception of some kind of danger. And I've had a number of people in the past couple of weeks talking to me about, well, Dan, I don't get it. The pain comes out of nowhere. There's nothing dangerous going on. I'm not aware of anything dangerous. I didn't have a thought about something dangerous. So this doesn't make sense to me. And so I guess the point is that these don't have to be based on conscious thoughts that we have. They don't have to be things that we're consciously aware of. You know, the subconscious is always working. I don't know what the number is. Uh, if you know what this number is, comment below and let me know. But a huge portion of the things that are going on in the brain we're not aware of. Right? Whether it be the managing of the autonomic nervous system and the, you know, the entire body, uh, or just, you know, the thoughts that go on. Much of them are happening in the subconscious, the unconscious, and it is very possible that things we're not consciously thinking of actively can still be active in the background. Excuse me, in the background. Just had some sparkling water. Don't mean to burp on camera. Yeah, so there's some things that might be going on in the background. You know, maybe you're worried about the holidays, for example. You know, we've got the Christmas holidays coming up very soon. And while you might not be consciously thinking about it, the overall anxiety level and worry level about the holidays and the stress of being around other people and hoping that the symptoms don't get worse you might not be consciously thinking those things, but subconsciously, though, a little bit of rumblings in the background. And so the reason I'm bringing this up is you don't always have to be able to identify exactly what thing was the danger. In some cases, it's an unconscious awareness that if I move a certain way, I'm going to hurt. So sometimes movement, physical. Sometimes it's emotional. You know, somebody recently had death of a family member. And they thought consciously they were dealing with it. But their subconscious decided that grief and that sadness is just too overwhelming. And what happened to the pain? It jumped. And so you don't have to worry about being consciously aware of the perceived danger in order to do something about it and, and turn it off because we can't stop the pain from coming if the brain perceives danger that would be like saying i'm going to touch a hot stove and i don't want the pain you can't stop it it's an automatic process it happens at the autonomic nervous system level a lot of its subconscious perceptions of danger and so we can't stop it but the best thing we can do is respond to it in a way that teaches the brain, oh, that thing we just did, it's not really dangerous. Or that thing you're perceiving as dangerous is not really dangerous. And I, I have some core things that I talk about. Awareness of our emotions, feel them so that we can teach the brain that you don't have to protect me from these emotions. Why? Because I'm feeling them. Awareness of our physical state. If we're constantly walking around all tense and tight, the brain's going to perceive danger. Even if there's nothing conscious that we're thinking of, 
if our normal state because of our hyper vigilance and our always looking out for danger is this and we're tense and tight all the time or we're guarding and protecting against pain the brain's perceiving danger um, so relax the body breathe is one of the things i talk about awareness of our thinking and not necessarily taking our own thinking so seriously uh, just because we have a thought doesn't make it true or helpful nor does it mean we have to take action on it. So these are some, some things that I suggest that we do. How we respond to pain is, is one of the most powerful things we can do, which is respond calmly in a reassuring manner. Indifference if you can get there, but the next best thing is calm reassurance. Try to stay away from the freak out zone, right? And shift your attention back to doing normal things, living your life you know, enjoying the company of others or enjoying the company of yourself, uh, whatever it may be, the more time you're spending doing normal things and not necessarily monitoring, managing, trying to fix your pain because that all comes from a place of feeling broken, the more normal things you do and the less time you're spending focused on your symptoms, the faster your brain's going to get the message that you're okay. So, Perceived dangers are not always conscious. They can be, but they don't have to be. And if you're spending all your time figuring out well, what's the dangers, what's the dangers, what's the dangers, that's a little bit of a trap because even if you can identify them, some people, some people will make a decision to go, well, I identified that that was dangerous, so I'm going to avoid that from now on. I'm never going to do that. Well, if we avoid our triggers or these perceived dangers from now on and we just walk around listing and, and tracking and, you know, writing down all of the possible triggers to pain so that we can avoid them, guess what? Your life's going to get very small very quickly. And as a result, many people are so petrified of the, of the physical symptoms called pain or other symptoms and they avoid so much that they literally stop living their life. They don't work, they don't socialize, they barely leave the house. Uh, in some cases they don't, they become bed bound, all in an effort to minimize or avoid the pain. And I understand exactly why that can happen. I've got zero judgment for anybody who that's happened to. But the way out is not to continually identify these perceived dangers, list them so we can avoid them, the way out is to really just start focusing on how can I teach my brain at an overarching level that I'm safe, that the symptoms don't mean anything other than perceived danger, that my body's already okay, that I can start to resume physical activity, right? If perceived dangers are what turns on pain or other symptoms and kind of dysregulates the nervous system, um, then safety is the solution, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but I'm getting a lot of uh, positive feedback here that this really makes sense. And it's not just about emotions. Yes, emotions are one of the many perceived dangers, but it's not just about emotions. So if all you're doing to fix your TMS is emotional discovery in whatever method you choose, you're only taking you're only taking on one aspect of the potential perceived dangers. But what are you doing to teach yourself that you're safe otherwise? Physically, mentally, right? Are you starting to do more, no, more normal things? Are you shifting your attention back to living your life? Are you becoming more outcome independent, right? So what do you guys think of this? Do you think it's helpful to list out the perceived dangers so you can avoid them? I don't think so. Again, that just leads to a much smaller life. So comment on this. Let me know what you're thinking. Does this perceived danger pain concept resonate with you? Let me know. Um, I love getting the feedback from you because it's through these videos and all of the feedback which I've gotten from you over the past two and a half going on three years um, that my concepts have really gotten to the point where I'm so certain of what's going on and thereby what the solution is that I can speak to it every day. So I hope you like this stuff. If you want some direct help, 
go to uh, painforyou.com forward slash join. That's my group program. Or you can go to danbuglio.com forward slash coaching for individual coaching. So let me know what you think. And uh, I guess we'll see you tomorrow.